every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles, and every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. And who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop Him? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? No one. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Come on, sing it up. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? No one. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Come on, our God. Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power. our praise tonight. Let's worship him. You are worthy, God. You are worthy of all of our praise. And Father, we honor you this evening. Come on, let's lift up holy hands, everybody. Come on, as an act of surrender. I know sometimes it, it doesn't feel right. Maybe you've been through challenge today. Maybe, maybe you've been through struggle. But I'm always reminded that David said, I will, I will, I will bless the Lord. In other words, Tonight, I will break through that veil of flesh. I will surrender myself before the presence of the Lord and say yes, despite what the circumstances say, despite what the circumstances may be yelling into your ear or into your heart, I will bless you, O oh God. Because regardless of what I've faced, regardless of what I've been through, you're still King of kings. You're still Lord of lords. And we worship and adore you, O oh God. Oh, we bless you, Father. Let's pray into the atmosphere right now. Holy Spirit, would you saturate this place just now? 
As we come before you, Lord, we come to you just the way we are. We come just the way we are, Father. Some of us may be broken. Some of us may be shouting on tops of mountains in victory. Some of us may be in the throes of defeat, but wherever we are, we declare the same thing. You are worthy to receive glory and honor and power and praise. Oh, we bless you, Father. Yes, Jesus, you're worthy. Come on, just worship him for a moment. Why don't we just worship him in the spirit for just a moment? to have our brothers from Mount Olive with us this evening. Guys, we encourage you to enter in with us. The atmosphere is changing now. Well, the Spirit of the Lord The evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord is here. The atmosphere. The atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord The evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord is here. Overflow. Overflow in this place. Fill our hearts with your love. Your love surrounds us. You're the The atmosphere is changing. The atmosphere is changing. Come on in, O oh God. The Spirit of the Lord. We need you, Lord. The evidence is all around. That the Spirit of the Lord. Overflow.
that the evidence is all around that the spirit of the Lord come on a miracle can happen right now a miracle can happen now well the spirit of the Lord is here the evidence the evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord is here. Come on, a miracle. One more time. Let's sing it. A miracle can happen now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. There is evidence. Evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord is Just sing your song to the Lord this evening. The Bible says to sing a new song. So access your heart before the King and just sing what you want to sing to Him. That's it. Let the wellspring of your worship rise up. Let the wellspring of your worship rise up. Let the wellspring of your worship rise up. Let the wellspring of your worship
just keep getting better Lord you just keep getting better you're so good you just keep getting better just keep getting better where can I go what can I do if I don't have you what can I say where would I be God I don't have you I love you father I love you father I love you father I love you father I tell you something tonight. I just got to be honest with you. I came in here this evening just, just distracted, you know, just, man, I was all over the place in my head. I just didn't feel like, you know, come on, is it all right if I just tell you, sometimes you just don't feel like it. I'm going to just be honest with you. I'm like, God, I'm struggling here. I, I, I just, I just don't know that I can do this tonight. No offense, but come on. I mean, some of y'all didn't even want to be here yourself, but you pressed on, right? But I'll tell you something, man. When the embrace of God just hits the room, it's worth every bit of toil and trouble. And I, I'm so glad it has nothing to do with me, and it's got nothing to do with you. It's got nothing to do with us. It's got everything to do with Him. And if we'll just press in, sometimes... Man, it doesn't have a thing to do with how you feel. Somehow we have gotten ourselves off track by thinking you've got to feel something in order to say, I've been with God. But can I just be honest with you? There are times I leave my prayer closet and I don't feel anything. But I, the Bible says, I know in whom I have believed. It doesn't say anything about I feel that I believe in. It says, I know in whom I have believed. So whether you've walked through anything today or not, I'm so glad that he remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. And even on my worst day, he's still so good to come in and for me to just say, Daddy, today wasn't my best, but you are. And I still give you praise, and I still love you, 
and I still honor you. And whether anybody else wants to go in with me or not, I'm just gonna come on in, all my junk in hand. You know, we want to give God our best offering. That's fine. But I think he's okay with us bringing our junk along sometimes too. And he says, hey, why don't you lay that down? I got you. Why don't you just lay that down? It's all right. But just don't pick it up again, right? So can we just lift up our hands one more, one more time? Just, just surrender. Just say, God, you are so good. You're so good, God. You're so good. I will bless the Lord at all times. I see you, Ramon. I see you back there, my brother. I see you with your hands up, man. Bless him. This guy just gave his life to Jesus just a couple weeks ago, and he's back there giving God praise to put us all to shame. I love it. 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 He's so worthy. I'm giving you a big hug, man. Can you? Yeah, there you go. I'm giving you a big hug, bro. God is so good, isn't he? Oh, we love you. Come on, just splash around a little bit in his goodness right now. Just go ahead and enjoy yourself. It's all right. Some of you need a little smile on your face. You ain't going to break. I promise it's going to be all right. Just go ahead and enjoy yourself in Jesus for just a moment. Go ahead and splash around in the kiddie pool because that's how God loves you. That's how your daddy loves you tonight. Oh, splash around, splash around. Let his goodness cover you. Splash around, splash around in his goodness. Splash around, splash around. That's how your daddy loves you. Splash around. All of his goodness. He's so good, isn't he? We want to welcome you tonight. Thanks for being here. Thanks for coming. Thanks for pressing out. Before you're seated, why don't you find somebody around you and encourage somebody? Give somebody a, a high five or a handshake or a hug and greet somebody. Tell them, man, I'm so glad you made it to church tonight. Glad you were able to worship with us. Oh, hey, guys, stay up here for a second. Stay up here for a second. Yeah. So good. So good, isn't it? have our ushers to come. We're going to continue on with worship as we give. How many of you are ready to worship the Lord by giving? How many of you are like excited, just out of your mind about it? Because the Bible says he loves a cheerful giver. Now, he'll take from a grouch, but he, he loves a cheerful giver, okay? So, Father, we thank you for this opportunity right now to, to be able to bless you in our giving. We thank you, Father, that you're the provider of every one of our needs. God, you're the one that can move mountains for us and do what only you can do to provide for us. But Father, it's our joy to give back to you what's yours. The tithe does not belong to us. It's not ours. So we give it cheerfully tonight. We thank you. I speak blessing over every household, every business. Those that are in need of a job here tonight, I speak blessing and increase over you. Maybe you need a better job. Maybe you need a better opportunity. I call it in from the north, south, east, and west. As you're faithful and obedient unto the Lord in your giving, he will reciprocate and give back to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And so, Father, we receive that tonight in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Let's put a smile on while that bucket passes you by, all right?
encounter your love your love surrounds us overflow in this place fill our Pastor Terry, same direction? Same? Um, I really just sense a uh, pressing to pray tonight. Um, can I confess, Pastor Andy? Yes. You confess. <laughs> Has anybody else be just been uh, battled with their flesh the past couple of days? Any, anybody? Ever since Monday, man, I've just just been battled, and um, I keep trying to encourage myself because Pastor Terry says that everything that's battled means God's in it. You know, anything that's battled means God's in it. I said, well, praise God. Um, but I just I I, I sense kind of a. Um, as I come in this place tonight, uh, I sense that as we got into worship that we were supposed to pray. And Pastor Joe, you may get a preach, I don't know, but I haven't got a preach for four weeks, so you know we're. You know, um, not that that matters to me. Uh, but I believe we're supposed to pray tonight, and um, oh, 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 oh shut up. Any, anybody that's just been um, pressing in and, and, and you, you feel like you've just been battled, whether it's in your flesh or, or whether you have um, physical uh, sickness or um, things going on in, in your family physically, I want, you to, I, I want you to come and get around this altar right now. And I want you to just begin to pray. I want you to begin to pray. You know, there, there's something about there, there's something about us praying in 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 this situation. And um, I, I shared a little bit about this a couple of weeks ago in Ezekiel 37, with the Valley of Dry Bones, and and it, it said that they it, it, it said in, in in the scripture that bone was connected and flesh come upon them, but there was still no breath. And I share with you how the enemy is not afraid of structure, but he's afraid of breath. And it's the breath that's connected with that praise or that prayer. And, and, and I'm finding out, maybe this isn't the case with you, but when, when I get into a battle, when there's a, an inward struggle going on, many times I get quiet. And I think that's the mistake. I think that's when we, re need, we need to release our breath. So tonight I'm going to ask you to release your breath, and Andy, it's either Isaac or Shelby that's supposed to sing, and you got to pick which one. Um, and everybody else, I'm going to ask everyone else that can to gather around the ones that's around this altar and just begin to pray over them. You don't have to touch them necessarily. You don't have to go up to them, but I'm going to ask you to get around the people at this altar and just begin to pray over them. Just begin to pray for them. I know this is a little different, but hey, I like different anymore. I'm just I'm not concerned with how things look, but I am concerned about finding the perfect will of God. 
So which one, Pastor Andy? Shelby. Shelby?
Right where you are, just just begin to open your mouth and just begin to exalt the Lord. Just begin to praise Him. Just begin to tell Him how good He is. Come on, everyone in the room, those of Mount Olive, everyone in every house that's watching, just begin to open your mouth and begin to praise Him. Just begin to tell Him how good He is. But there's none like Him. There's none like Him. He's great all by himself. He's worthy. You're high and lifted up, God. The train of your robe fills the temple, God. You've already conquered any enemy we could ever face, Lord. That's why your robe, the train of your robe fills the temple, God. And Father, you've already defeated every enemy that could come against us. We only only face defeated foes. So Father, we exalt you tonight, God. We praise you, God. We exalt you. You are king. You are Lord. You are mighty. You are majesty. You are God all by yourself, God. Besides you, there is none other. You're Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. You're the first and the last. You're our healer. You're our savior. You're our deliverer, our strong tower. You're our hiding place. You are the one that come runs in when everyone else has ran out, God. You are the one that said you would never leave us and never forsake us. You are the one, God, that called us not orphans, but you brought us in and you have become a father to us. You are the one that calls us sons and daughters, God. We exalt you, God. You are faithful. You are faithful. Breathe on us tonight, God. Breathe on us. 
Now I'm going to ask you to do a, I'm going to ask you to do a difficult thing. And that's just begin to confess to him. And you just bring yourself to him and say, God, I confess my life before you tonight, God. Search my heart. Test my mind, God. If there's anything in me that displeases you, God, oh, convict me of it tonight, God. Make me aware of it. Just begin to confess right now. Come on, just begin to open your mouth and confess before him. Ask him to search. Ask him to reveal. If there's anything hidden or anything underlying, just ask him. It's important that we do this. It's important that we confess before him. Because many times we can just go on and act like nothing's going on and he's tapping us on the shoulder. But when we get in a place of surrender, we get in a place of praise, we get in a place of prayer, we begin to confess to him. It's when he begins to just love on us and reveal what the issues might be. So, Father, we just come tonight and we just confess our lives before you. We lay ourselves at your feet tonight, God. And Lord, we just ask that you search our heart, test our mind. And Lord, if there's anything in us that's displeasing to you, reveal it. Convict us of it tonight, God. That hidden thing, God, may we deal with it tonight, Lord. That that irritating thing that just keeps coming up, Lord, I, I pray that tonight we would confess it to you. We give it to you. And we'd be released from it tonight. So, Lord, we just confess our lives right now. We confess. Deal with my flesh tonight, God. Crucify my flesh tonight, God. Crucify it, God. Nail it down, God. Pierce it, God. Cut away what needs to be cut away, God. Sear what's, what needs seared. Sever what needs severed tonight, Lord. Circumcise the heart tonight, God. We confess it to you, God. That unresolved issue, we confess it to you tonight. That secret sin, God, we confess it to you tonight. That unforgiveness that we just haven't let go because we want to hold on to it just in case. God, just like Pastor Andy said Sunday, we release them. If there's any, any unforgiveness right now, just release, just release that, that person that you're harboring that against. Just release them right now. Just release them in freedom. Forgive them. Don't let anything stand between you and God. There's been bitterness between a husband and wife. Just forgive right now. Our prayers are hindered until we forgive our spouse. So, Lord, right now I just confess, God, do what you want to do. And, Lord, I thank you for the perfect work of confession, God. We live in a world where we're taught to keep everything inside because of how we might look to someone if they really knew what was going on, how they would really look at you if they really knew your genuine, true circumstances. And the enemy has kept us bound too long that there is a freedom that is to be walked in that only comes through brokenness and transparency. And confession leads to brokenness. There's this thing with God that He refuses to leave us the way that we are, that there is just something that happens when we allow God to get us to a place of brokenness, that when we allow God to get us to a place of transparency, there is a genuineness that comes forth. There is a true refreshing that comes, one that is not based on hype, One that doesn't just make you feel good when you sing a certain song. But then when you walk out the door, you feel low again. But when we allow ourselves to be broken to the point of surrender, there is a work that God does in our heart that sets us free. 
that it doesn't matter what song is sung, I'm free. It doesn't matter what comes my way, I'm free. It doesn't matter what someone does around me, I'm free. So, Father, we just confess right now, and you do what you want to do. And we thank you for it. And now, just begin to open your mouth and just begin to thank the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Just thank him. Come on. Just open up your mouth and thank him for how good he is. This isn't just for the people around the altar. This is for everybody. The one in the congregation, the ones at Mount Olive, the ones that online. This is for just begin to thank him. Well, God, well, Pastor, we've already praised him. Listen, there's a difference. forever, God. Father, we thank you that you loved us enough to die on a cross for us. We thank you, God, that it wasn't just salvation that you wanted to give us, God, but three days later you arose out of that tomb, God, to give us everlasting life. You've delivered us. You've saved us. You've set us free, God. We thank you for the perfect work of the cross. We thank you for the redemptive work, God. We thank you for everlasting life, God. We thank you for this church tonight, God. We thank you for a body of believers that, that is connected not just in this sanctuary, but even in a prison in Mount Olive. That, that we're all connected tonight through prayer, through praise, through confession, through thanksgiving. Father, we thank you, God, that you're enough. We thank you for the gasoline in the car to get us here tonight, God. We thank you for food in the cabinets at home, God. We thank you for shoes on our feet tonight, God. And many of us have another pair at home just waiting. We thank you for the clothes that you've given us, God. We thank you for our family. We thank you for our moms and our dads, our sons and our daughters, our grandpas and grandmas, God, our extended families, our grandsons and granddaughters, God. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for how you've blessed us tonight, God. Thank you for the Blue Jays in my backyard. Thank you for the squirrels that comes and eats my peanuts, God. Might be a simple, dumb thing to somebody, but man, it means something to me. Thank you for the morning doves. Thank you for peace, God. Thank you for the presence of God. Can we just enter into his presence just a little bit longer? Can we enter in just a little bit longer? Just let him do that work. There, I, there is a work still that God desires to do tonight that someone's holding back from. I, I'm not trying to, to extend anything. I'm just trying to be obedient. I, oh, there is a work that God desires to do, and you're holding back from it. I don't know exactly who or what it is, but you're just holding back. I don't know if it's fear that's keeping you from it. I don't know if it's a bad experience. I don't know that if it's something that you've seen as a child or, or uh, I think that might be it. Oh, uh, it, it, it's something that you witnessed as a child or, or a teenager. And you've often talked about it and you made fun of it. But you've often questioned, is that really God or is that flesh? And you're afraid that if you just completely surrender and let go, the people's going to look at you and they're going to laugh at you or mock you. And it is keeping you from God's best. So tonight, just, just let go. Just let it go. Let me encourage those at Mount Olive, just let it go. Don't be concerned about how you think other men's going to look at you, what they're going to think about you. Just, let's just be a worshiper. Just 
just abandon the flesh and step into the fullness of God. You just say, whatever you want, God, I say yes. So, Father, right now, right now, Lord, I pray that you would just move upon the hearts of the men and women in this service and watching by internet. And Lord, I I pray that you would just move in us. And Lord, we thank you for the work of salvation. We thank you for the work of redemption. Lord, I sense there is still something more that you are drawing us into. There is still something more that you are calling our names to come forward. Mm. Lord, you dealt with my heart about this. I can't remember if it was yesterday or if it was this morning when I was praying. But Lord, I sense that you are calling us deeper into the holy place, into the holy of holies, God. You're calling us, you're wooing us to come deeper. And Lord, I pray that we would just go as far as you want us to go. Lord, I pray that we would just surrender our hearts to you. Whatever you want, we say yes. So, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for your love and your acceptance, God. But we don't have to prove anything to anybody. You love us just the way that we are. With all of our cracks and our flaws and faults, all of our goofy habits. You love us just the way we are, and you accept us in that manner. Yeah, think about that. Thank you, Lord. Can we just thank you? Can we just thank him one more time? Can you just open your mouth? Seriously, can you just open your mouth and just thank him? Thank you. Thank you for his goodness. Just thank you. Just thank you. Thank you, Lord. You're worthy. You're holy. Can um, I just, hey, I'm not even going to explain myself. Can you just begin to thank God for your sons and daughters right now? Can you just begin to pray and thank him for your sons and daughters? They they might be all jacked up, but just thank him. They're coming home. They're coming home. They might be out there somewhere and you, you feel like they're beyond your reach, but they aren't beyond God's reach. Father, I thank you for my kids, Lord. I thank you you know where they are. I thank you, Lord, that because of our relationship, you won't leave them alone, God. You won't let them go. Oh, God, I thank you that your arm is not short, that you cannot save. I thank you for my two sons right now, God. I thank you they're created in your image. I thank you for my daughter, God. I thank you for the plans that you have in store for my daughter, God. I thank you that they are yet alive, God. I thank you that I shall see all my sons daughters, grandsons and granddaughters saved and baptized in the Holy Ghost, God. I want to see it, God. I thank you for them, Lord. I thank you for them. I thank you, God. Lord, I thank you for the work that you're doing in the people in this congregation, the great-grandsons and great-granddaughters and great-great-great-great-great-great-great-grandsons and granddaughters, God, will walk into freedom because of where these men and women are walking, God, because of what they're cultivating, because of what they're stirring up on the inside, God. Ah. I tell you, I just, I sense, I sense something. I, I sense something, and, and, and Pastor Andy was, was telling us this, this uh, before service that Angie went back to, is, is it okay if I share about the nerves? That uh, Angie went back to the doctor yesterday. It was her first uh, doctor's appointment since the surgery. 
and she was she still in a lot of pain and a lot of things going on and and she was asking the doctor why what is some of these things that I'm feeling and and they said you have to understand that some of your nerves were severed during this procedure and the nerves are trying to find each other again and, and the doctor said, so you're going to feel some, some goofy things go on, might even feel like electricity at times, and all that is is your nerves trying to connect. And, he said, and they said, some of those nerves will come back together like this, and some of them will come like this. I sense that God is trying to connect your faith back together again. Uh, hmm. I think it was... Uh, um, was it uh, was it Sunday or was it Tuesday that you were talking about uh, 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 someone else's prayer life and don't don't um, don't compare yourself to someone? Last Wednesday, last Wednesday, Pastor Andy was talking about prayer life and and he said, "Don't compare yourself to someone else's prayer life." And then he said something that I about fell out of my chair with. He said, don't compare your prayer life now to a prayer life that you had in a different season. See, he, he didn't know what he said, but God knew what I needed. Now, see, I can just act like I got it all together and I can, but I, I'm, listen, you're never going to learn that way. We're never going to learn unless we have people around us that's just real and transparent. And I believe that's what Acts 2 was really all about. But I remember a time in 2006. I'd get up every morning and I'd walk the rails of trails in Enterprise. And I'd pray. And I'd cry out to God. And man, it got to a point that it was just like he was walking beside of me. It was effortless. Then something happened. I had two leaders in my ministry fall. And I felt like, I felt like the ministry was going to cave in. See, fear, God, the enemy has always used fear against me. He's always tried to inflict fear to shut me down. And he told me the whole, whole ministry was going to implode because these, I, I think we counted it up. I think we counted it up that these two leaders were connected to about 84 different people inside the church. And that if we didn't handle it just right, y'all know what I'm talking about? If you don't handle it just right. Now, you know, you, 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 we, we lost 350 here uh, in, in about one week about uh, nine years ago. And, and, you know, that was, that, that was a hit. But, man, when you're a church of 300 and, and you, you think about losing 80-some, man, that's, that's astronomical. And to be honest with you, we only lost one family in, in the midst of all of that. And it was because they didn't think that I should have the authority to have those two ladies step down. Well, okay, whatever. But sometimes you just have to do what you have to do. But I allowed that thing to consume me and interrupt my prayer life. And there might be seasons that you go through where you have something happens, have something happen, and it might interrupt your prayer life. But let me tell you something. The key is this. Don't stop. Okay, maybe your prayer life isn't what it once was, but keep praying. Remember, it isn't about how you feel. Don't shut up. Don't stop. Don't quit praying. I think sometimes God let me feel that just to, to know how tangible His presence really can be. And I've always looked back at that time and thought, I'm not, I'm not as successful in my prayer life as what I once was. And that's just a, a tactic the enemy is using to try to shut me down. So you can never compare your prayer life to a previous season. You just keep praying. Tell your neighbor, you just keep praying. Re remember in Ecclesiastes 3, 
I think there's 28 seasons. A time to live, a time to die, a time to mourn, a time to dance, and all this stuff. There's one season you won't find, and that's to quit. Never in there to say quit. Listen, when I die, I haven't quit. I've just started living. Don't quit. You're going through hell, hell, that's not the stopping point, trust me. Keep going. Don't quit. The enemy's already lost. You just don't stop. Don't stop praying. The Lord is just trying to connect your faith back together. I tell you, God, God is doing such a work in this body. He, he, he's connecting things that you thought were dead and gone. You, you were beginning to have things rise up on the inside of you that you thought you'd never sense again. Or at least I am. I'll just talk about myself. And God is, so, God is such a God of resurrection that even when you think it's dead and over, God says, oh, I'm just getting ready to breathe on that thing again and bring it back to life. And I'm telling you, if he can do it with your spirit, if he can do it with who you are, he can do it with your son, he can do it with your daughter, your grandson, your granddaughter. There isn't anything that God can't breathe on and bring back to life. You just trust him with it. You just trust him. Praise the Lord. We clear? Have we taken up offering or anything yet? We've already taken up? Wow, praise God. Pastor Terry, you clear? Is there anything you want to say? Good. Can I have a microphone? Please. And uh, Ted, can you come up here and close us? Please. Thank you. How many of you enjoyed baptism Sunday morning? Yeah. Wasn't that something? Yeah. That was incredible. There, there, was, there, was one, there was one big guy, i got to confess. i got another confession. No, come on up here, Pastor Terry. Well, glory to God. Well, glory to God. To God be the glory. That's God's helping. But that, that's exactly who was on my heart, so I just... Really, it's, uh, it's kind of wonderful. Uh, thank God to help me out. I'll start shouting. Praise God. Yeah. You shout any time, Pastor Terry. Oh. This is God's servant. He's one of the most wonderful men of prayer. Yes, he I've is. Yes, sir. He's, I, I know him when he, when he connected with the Lord. And yeah. When it's been marvelous to walk with God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Whatever God's got him to do, it's in divine order. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. However you live, brother. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us. Thank you, Father, for your love and your, your blessings, Lord. Thank you for writing our name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Oh, we bless you, Father. We magnify you now, Lord. We're thankful for how you worked and moved tonight, Lord, and how you led for prayer and, and Jesus for all the things you do, Lord. And I just pray, God, you'd help us, Lord, to keep pressing forward, Lord, at all times, Jesus, not to back up, not to give up, not to lay down. Oh, God, I pray for mercy on my soul, Lord. I pray, oh, Lord, that I would keep seeking you. Oh, I thank you, Father, for the work that you've done in my heart, Lord. I thank you for what you've birthed in my heart, Lord God, the vision you've given me of you, Lord, the desire you've placed within me, Jesus. I give you praise for it. I know it's nothing of me, Lord. I know it's not a man thing. I know it's only the Father in heaven that could do such a thing. And so, Lord, I bless you. I praise you. I magnify you. I worship you. You are holy and mighty and worthy of all praise and all glory and all blessing and power. Oh, you're high and lifted up. There's none like you. There never has been and there never will be. And so we praise you and bless you. Oh, God, you're mighty and worthy and holy. You're a good God. You're a mighty God. You are seated, oh, Lord, in heavenly, Lord.
Lord. Oh God, the cherubim and the seraphim, they worship you day and night and night and day, always exalting you, always praising you, Lord. So we join in now. We exalt you now, Lord. And so, Father, I pray, oh God, right now, Lord, that you would draw and you would call men and women, Lord, from the north, south, east, and west. Oh, I pray, God, that every seat, Lord, is waiting on a person, oh God, to be in this body of believers. Oh, Lord, you'd send them now. You'd send them now. Oh, God, I pray that every person that you've called to this place, oh, God, you'd bring them in now. I pray that every key, oh, Lord, to the revival, oh, God, to be birthed into the kingdom now. I pray that every soul, oh, God, that needs their name written in the Lamb's Book of Life would be birthed into the kingdom now. Oh, God, we ask you, Lord, to have your way. We ask you, Lord, to move. We ask you, Father, to pour out your spirit, oh, God, the latter rain, oh, God. Oh, I pray the latter rain would come, oh, Lord. I pray that we'd be found faithful, oh, Lord, with oil in our lamps. Oh, God, we'd have our wicks trimmed. Oh, Lord, I pray we'd be like, oh, Lord, the virgins, oh, God, waiting for the bridegroom to come. Oh, Lord, we'd be seeking you. We'd be hungering for you. I pray right now, oh, God, that you'd put a hunger and a thirst in this place right now in every heart, in every mind, in every body, in every soul. I pray, oh, God, it burn within them. Oh, Lord, like that bush on the mountain, oh, God, when Moses went up and found you, oh, Lord. Oh, God, I pray this burning within us, oh, God. I pray it would burn and burn and burn, oh, God. I pray, oh, God, that you would consume, oh, God, all the darkness within. I pray your light would dispel all the darkness within. Oh, we thank you that you can do more in seconds, Lord, than we can do in lifetimes. So I pray, oh, God, that we would be a people, oh, a people seeking God, a people hungering and thirsting after God, a people, oh, God, seeking you, oh, God, before everything that we would forsake all in Jesus' name. Go ahead. Go ahead. Give him praise. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is to close this service out tonight, God. I just sense I'm supposed to do something a little controversial. So, Lord, I pray. Plead the blood of Jesus over my words and over every heart. But can we just pray and lift up our president tonight? It isn't about Democrat or Republican. But I tell you, we need to lift up the president of the United States. It doesn't matter how we feel about him. He is the leader of this nation. So, Father, we lift up a leader of this nation right now. And, Lord, I pray. Oh, God, I pray that the Holy Ghost and power would come upon this man right now. And I pray, God, you'd give him divine favor, Lord. I pray you would overshadow him, Lord. Give your angels charge over him. And, Lord, help give him wisdom tonight, I pray. Help him to make the decisions that you want made over this great nation, God. I pray that we would establish communication with the countries that we need to establish it with, God. And we would sever communication with the countries that we need to sever it with. And Father, I pray that you would shut up the mouths of the lying tongue, God, of the tongue of competition, God, of the tongue of manipulation. I pray you would silence the very voice of hell tonight. You would silence the voice of the enemy tonight, God. And I pray that you would come upon this president of the United States, God. And I pray that you would whisper with the voice of the Holy Ghost in his ear. And whether he's supposed to go left or right, straight, God, I pray that you would move on him, in him, and through him, God. I pray that he would have an ear to hear hear what the Spirit has to say to the church, what the Spirit has to say to the nation. And Father, I pray that you would drive back what needs to be driven back, that hell would be driven back tonight, God. Now, Lord, I pray that if it's your will that we would lay down our titles as Democrat and Republican or independent or whatever, that we would lay it down and we would become a unified nation. One nation under God. And Lord, I pray that your kingdom would be established in the United States of America. And Lord, I pray that this president, before he leaves office, I pray, if he hasn't already, God, I'm not his judge, but Lord, I pray that if he hasn't already, 
I pray that he would come to know and accept you as Lord and Savior, and he would not be ashamed to say it, declare it, and put it out there. And Lord, I pray that we would have a president led by the Holy Spirit. And I pray once again, we would become a nation on fire of the Holy Ghost. I thank you for it, Lord. I thank you for all that you've done. Lord, I pray that hearts was encouraged and fed. I pray that spirits was stirred. And Father, I pray that you've done a work in Mount Olive. And Lord, I pray you've done a work here in this sanctuary. And Father, we just thank you for who you are. We commit it all to you, God, for your glory. And we thank you for it. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Give God praise one more time. Thank you for being here. We'll see you Sunday morning.